Hello everyone, my free to play account turned 3 years old so it's time for another review. First I will quickly go over my character weapon artifact counts and then I show every character I built in detail while rambling about stuff related to the game. Maybe you are even interested to hear yet another person giving their take on Gacha during that time. First, to ease ourselves into it though, I like to name my three favorite characters, but there are so many by now, it's getting a little tough. So I don't want to cop out, so here we go. As for limited 5 star characters, currently I have 12 of them unlocked and some of them do have constellations, namely C2 Raiden and C1 Farina. As for standard 5 stars, I'm at 6 out of 7, only missing Jean with Diluc at C3, Kiching and Mona at C2 and Chi Chi and Dia at C1. I guess when it comes to winning the 50-50, my luck completely averaged out with both 15 limited and 15 non-limited characters. As for 4 stars, I have everyone except for 3, Kirara, Hazel and Toma and I have maxed out 9 of them at C6, I guess technically you could say 10 if you include C5 Bennett. As for 5 star weapons, currently I am sitting on 7 unlocks with 3 of them being refined ones which obviously adds up to a total of 10. As for 4 stars, I leveled up 28 of them all the way to 90 and I just say I have a lot of them maxed out at refinement rank 5. As for artifacts, I have a total of 371 at plus 20. I also put a breakdown of the sets I'm using on screen in case you're wondering which domains I mainly farmed. And of course, I won't go over every single artifact, it would simply take way too long, but you will see the ones I'm actually using later when I show the builds. At this point in the video, I usually talk about how much money I spend, the reason for this is that I play in two different regions. In this one though, I didn't purchase anything, it's a complete free to play account. If you're curious though, in the other one I spent about 600 euros since the game's release and I believe that translates to about the same amount of USD. Now I show other builds and they are quite a lot so I will try to go through them a little faster. While that's happening I also talk about some random stuff related to this account or the game in general just to fill the air with some background noise. Alright, if I remember correctly then this account in the European region was made on the February 17th 2021 during the first lantern ride in patch 1.3. As I mentioned before, I also play on the North American server and I started there first whenever this game was released. The reason for me for sticking with playing two accounts isn't super deep, basically it's just to have access to every character without spending more money than I'm comfortable with. For me personally, the main appeal of Genshin is definitely on the gameplay side, so characters are kind of a big deal for that. Of course, this game is a little lacking when it comes to that, the devs get criticized a lot for the endgame, but I still enjoy what we have for now. When I'm done, I guess I just turn the game off and play something else. Also, maybe there will be more to do at some point, who knows. Now you might think, it sounds kind of repetitive, and you would be correct about that, so playing two accounts isn't something I would recommend. But it also doesn't take as much effort as you might think, on average I spend around 15 minutes daily here, the repetitive part is mainly just skipping through the main story each patch after having already completed it on the first account, and then clearing daily commissions, resin and the occasional events. This combined with Abyss is like 90% of the Primo gems you can earn. Running around exploring isn't really worth anything, at least if you're only interested in building characters and playing around with them in Abyss. On my main account, I very much enjoy doing all the side content, so this is by no means a slight against the quality itself. I know this doesn't sufficiently answer the question yet, but don't worry, I'll get back to that in a bit. Also, at the end, I show the stats from the Hoyo website in case you're curious. Before that though, in the beginning I randomly mentioned my three favorite characters, so at this point I usually like to elaborate. For this I actually for once take the whole package into consideration, not just gameplay, but the way their personality is portrayed or aesthetics as well. Though for the last point there isn't really much to say, I think most of Genshin's characters look great, I love the art style of this game. As for the story, I really enjoyed the Fontaine Archon quest and a lot of the characters involved, but Farina especially is amazing. I enjoyed her theatrics and towards the end there was obviously a lot of character development and depth. Navia it's kind of the same thing, but I'm a little confused by her English voice actor I gotta say. Maybe I'm crazy but it almost sounds like the story character and the playable character were voiced by different people? 
At some point I even confused her with Fischl during combat, but obviously it's not a big deal. I just wanted to point it out. As for Raiden, I think her story was fine, but more than anything she is my favorite character to play. Her teams are very active and feel so smooth with the extra energy generation. As for the other two, they just have very unique teams. Healing or crystallized elemental reactions aren't very exciting mechanics, but Navia and Farina change the way to engage with them fundamentally in an exciting way. I very much enjoy that change of pace. Speaking of characters, getting every one of them on a single account costs roughly estimated around $100 every month. So why not just do that? You might think that's fairly affordable for people who have the luxury of spending time on playing games in the first place, right? As you might have guessed by now, it's time to get really boring, it's time to regurgitate the good old gacha debate. I know it's getting tiring after three years of people having these discussions and it's probably not even what you're here for, but it's related to my reasons of playing two accounts to which I already alluded to earlier. This topic will also cover the rest of the video since there isn't much else left to talk about, the game didn't really fundamentally change, so if you aren't interested, I totally understand, now is your chance to mute or dip out. I already heavily implied that I'm very much against gacha as a business strategy. To me it just feels like it's a case of consumer exploitation, but I also know I'm not an expert in business ethics. At the end of the day I understand the only goal of a company is and should be maximizing profits. It's fundamental to their survival and the responsibility to keep them in check is on the government. Now, Genshin was the game that paved the way into the West for Gacha, so it might not be as big of a surprise that there isn't a whole lot of legislature surrounding it just yet. If I remember correctly, there are some European countries that banned loot boxes, but I'm also not very informed on how or if at all that extends to Gacha. Personally, I welcome any kind of regulation, it seems to be the only way to actually change anything at this point. Starting on an individual level can help, maybe it even grows into something bigger to exert public pressure, which certainly is effective, but I feel like at best it weeds out some bad apples, though it never really gets rid of the entire basket, if that makes sense. So here I'm still playing, people will always have their vices, so do I, and Genshin is mine. Also, let's be honest, it's been three years, obviously sunk cost fallacy also factors into it. I'm invested in my account and the story, I have no problem to admit that. Now Gacha might be bad in its entirety, but to be fair there are different flavors of it. The main differentiating factor is a competitive element which provides a frame of reference for player power. The game is showing you clearly how you measure up against other players. Of course, this speaks to some sort of psychological mechanism in the brain to pressure people into spending more. Again, I'm also not an expert on psychology, but I do believe there are enough studies out there at this point proving that game design can focus on exploiting those mechanisms in certain cases. Aside from whales beating people in PvP or on leaderboards, there is also the whole pop-up thing offering huge discounts. Genshin doesn't do any of that, so I think it's fair to say that this game does respect its player base more than most other gachas. There is still a small subset of players who pride themselves in their free-to-play status and pretend that they don't have any part in popularizing this product, which seems a little delusional to me, but honestly I don't think it matters, at least they aren't victimized by the system. Some people also like to draw comparisons to gambling and condemn gacha on that basis. To be completely honest, I don't care about that at all. Gambling is part of a lot of games, but visiting the casino in a Dragon Quest game doesn't really seem to produce the same negative outcome. So I don't see rolling on a banner with some kind of in-game currency as a bad thing per se. The problem is more like this process is completely undermined by having an integrated cash up when it comes to gacha. It seems to me Gambling addiction only works if it is done with real money. To finally answer the question, let's get to my personal journey with this medium. I was super captivated by the game and I truly still think it's a good game. But this whole gacha thing was new to me, especially early on there are a lot of time gates in place, progression is very slow and I just wanted to play more, at which point making a second account felt kind of natural to me. Later on the aforementioned lack of endgame also played a part, but obviously none of these reasons held up in the long run. There really is no good reason to play multiple accounts and there really shouldn't be, so circling back to the $100 a month, to put it bluntly, I wouldn't even be super comfortable to spend that much money on an entire game, but here we are talking about one single character in a game. Saying it out loud now sounds even more ridiculous, of course I'm not willing to do that. It's more on principle, but I'm also not super rich, so I understand that some people might have a vastly different perspective on that number. 
they might not care at all, but that doesn't necessarily change the fact that they get taken advantage of. I know supply and demand, but I just don't believe the service they provide is actually worth that much. So in conclusion, I don't believe there are any real upsides to having multiple accounts that aren't direct consequences of this being a gacha game. At first I thought having both perspectives, free to play and pay to win might be somewhat valuable, and I guess it's true to a certain extent, exercising some restraint might make you feel good, and so does having access to every character in the game. Even though, again, that being an option in the first player seems already kind of wrong in and itself. Doesn't matter anyway, since in the long run it feels to me that this distinction grew to be pretty meaningless. Your player power is irrelevant at this point, which kind of undermines the incentive structure of Garchawa in general when it comes to the pay to win aspects. You could still argue from a collector's perspective, but I think that has always been entirely unconvincing since you aren't really purchasing anything. Players are just using a service and paying only results in a premium service. You don't actually own anything you get to put on a shelf. One last thing, maybe someone else will release a similar game at some point which isn't gacha. I heard Nintendo is focused on publishing casual games. Jokes aside though, speaking of other games, if you followed my channel you might ask yourself why I don't play Honkai Star Rail. I actually did try it recently and I think it's a good game, I like it, but I'm not sure how much time I want to commit to it or even if I want to keep playing it at all, but no, I'm not boycotting it if that was the impression it gave off. Alright, we made it to the end. This weird love-hate relationship I developed with this game kind of reminds me of World of Warcraft. Sorry if that wasn't what you're here for and had to listen to all of that. Anyway, I really enjoy making these videos cause even though I said player power is meaningless, I still love to see some sort of resume on how my account progressed each year. Hopefully this was also somewhat entertaining to you as well and I'd love to see you back next time. Until then, have fun and bye bye.